My name's Lisa Hammond. I've been a potter for 35 years plus, maybe a bit now. I started when I was at school, then went on to work in Covent Garden for Kenneth Clark briefly before I went to college. So I've been at Mays Hill for about 22 years now. I decided to have this place with teaching in mind actually. So um, I started taking on apprentices pretty soon afterwards. So I've had about 12 now. It's a very important part of what I do. I guess the major thing we do here, which is pretty unusual, is we do soda glaze in London. And we have a large trolley kiln, which we soda glaze in, and then a smaller one. Every single pot comes out differently. So a few years ago, I decided to actually make them completely different. So if you look at the breadth of work that I make now, um, you'll see that each pot is approached uniquely, not just in its making, although they've got similarities, but it's, it's also the glazed surface because the nature of the kiln makes them different anyway. So I encourage that now. The soda glaze pots, we use three clays mixed together. Obviously, we're in London, so we don't really have the space to, to mix our clay from, from raw. Um, but we mix a lot of commercial clays together to get exactly what we want. So we never use the clay straight. Um, I've been using quite a lot of black clay and high iron clays uh, in the last probably four or five years. That kind of came out of first using chinos and red chinos and using iron underneath and so I was very interested to try and get a white chino on a black clay and also now more recently a red clay which is just, it's actually a stoneware but we again we, we don't use it straight we mix it with other clays. Our firing is pretty pretty hardcore. Um, you know, we're firing to cone 12 flat and we're up at high temperature for quite a long time. So they, they really have to be strengthened up, they wouldn't, wouldn't take it. Um, so I guess we're at high temperature for at least seven or eight hours. Um, and I think that's partly what gives the surface that we get um, because we're, everything is really well fused and melted. So the bowl that I've made with the pouring lip, it's actually um, a thrown bowl with a turned foot, quite a straight foot, which is quite unusual for me. Um, but these are based on uh, rice bowls and they're quite a low slung curve, which I think suits this kind of shape very well with the, with the spout on. Then what I do is I throw the basic shape, very simple bowl, um, and then I also throw uh, what will then become the pouring lip, which is a little cylinder thrown off the hump, which um, I'll then cut in half at a later stage when it's leather hard. So the, the foot is turned on the bowl and then I construct the two together. And then later the whole piece will be carved. I decorate in, in many different ways, but uh, one of the ways I use is a Hakami brush, which is basically a bunch of rice straw, and that will give you a great texture. Another way I like to decorate um, the large pots is I dip the head of the, the pot in slip, first of all, and then I use a thicker version of the same slip and, and literally scoop it up and put it on with my hand. So in quite a sort of gesture, a, a real gesture to it. So they're very fluid, they're done very fast um, and I think quite dynamic because of that. About nine years ago I set up a, a charity called Adopt Potter and it started with a very simple aim was to help people train and to help fund students to go to other potters and that's worked very well but we've discovered that that's actually not enough now. Um, the many more closures of colleges have happened and we're now looking at setting up a training school in Stoke-on-Trent. Um, so my future I think is going to be for a little while is working alongside making my own work is to to get the school up and running and that's my hope for the, the next couple of years to get that running successfully.